evening, everyone. Please take your songbook and stand. Turn to song 194. Song 194. We're going to have choir rehearsal right now. Okay? Song 194. When we all get to heaven, we'll sing and shout the victory. So let's do a little practice tonight. Amen? Sing and shouting the victory. Song 194. When we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we talk with brother robinson and i uh, was talking with my wife and we just all agreed that the spirit in church this morning was amazing and uh, just folks singing and shouting the victory and uh, amen in the preacher and just had a wonderful wonderful time today i had a couple visitors and uh, one visitor said pastor i, I think i gonna make this my church home this is his first time here today and i was like well that's what i like to hear my friend so uh that was just that was great it was a wonderful service and i'm looking forward tonight to pastor robinson preaching again let's pray together as uh, we begin our service father we're so thankful for your goodness to us thank you for uh, just everything that has happened in our church over the last few days with the men having the beast feast and and then Sunday school with Mrs. Robinson and Brother Robinson in here and then the Sunday morning service. It has just been an amazing few days and, and uh, Lord, we're tired, but we're thankful. We've been blessed. We've been blessed so much and I pray that tonight, Lord, with the last service here with the Robinsons that and as we're getting ready to end this month of of all these guest uh, preachers and missionaries that have been in, I pray that it would just be the perfect fitting into that uh, to uh, all the preachers coming in here. And you just use Pastor tonight, and that you would speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, we we pray that you would please speak to us and and give us ears to hear. Help us to discern the voice of God, and then to obey and respond to the voice of God. We love you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Please keep your songbook out. Turn to song number 81 as we sing Draw Me Nearer. Song 81 will sing the first, the third, and the last. Song 81. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be Three. Oh, the pure delight of a single love that I thought I spent. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune with friend with friend. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross. I pray. 
tonight and uh, just a reminder to you that uh, this Wednesday we're getting back into the book of Psalms and I expect I'm looking at your faces I'm gonna memorize who's here because I expect you to be here Wednesday okay I got it all right and uh, so this uh, Wednesday 7 p.m. Kings Kids is also going on so the kiddos get to go in there and have fun and uh, you get to have fun too, okay? It's lively. It's a good time. All right, but uh, that's Wednesday at seven. I'm looking forward. I, I haven't, I haven't been preaching a lot this last month. Have all these missionaries and guest speakers in, and it's starting to boil over. I'm just ready to, ready to go. So, uh, uh, looking forward to that. And then the Lord's Supper is next Sunday after the morning service. I, on Sunday mornings, I've been announcing this. If you want to spend some time in prayer before the service with some other people, you can go to the Home Builders classroom. They're gonna, it's gonna be open at 8:15. Uh, until or right around Sunday school time, and if you want to get in there and just spend some time in prayer for church and the services, that would be a blessing. That'd be a good thing to do. And then, uh, Good Samaritans, the potluck is the 17th, Sunday, the 17th of October, after the morning service in the fireside room. And uh, we're looking forward to getting back into that ministry for our widows and widowers, and that'll be a great time. And then, Friend Day is right around the corner. Begin thinking who you're going to invite, begin praying for them, and uh, we've got some events in October to invite people to, and we're just looking forward to God doing a great work. I'm praying that October would be the greatest month of visitors and salvations that we've ever had, and I hope that you'll join me in that prayer, that God would just do some amazing works in, in, in his church uh, during the month of October. Let's pray together for our offering. Father, We've had a great time today. I pray you bless this offering. I pray you bless the preaching of the Word of God. In just a few moments, we'll get right to it. And I'm looking forward to that. And again, just thank you for all that you've done. And I pray that you'd charge us up tonight. Pray that you would, again, just help us to, help us to be obedient. That, Lord, uh, we, our spirit would be stirred. And that something would happen in our midst. And our church would be different going forward. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What a blessing that was. Please take your songbook and stand. Turn to song number 492. 492. As we sing, The Longer I Serve Him. Song 492. Since I started.
heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Every need he is supplying, plenteous grace he bestows. Just so much this last couple days, and and uh, this just this morning with Pastor Robinson, he didn't come down. What a great message that was, and uh, we've enjoyed that. Of course, if you were maybe you were in Sunday school or you were in a class this morning teaching and you didn't get to hear Pastor Robinson, first of all, <clears throat> this week go back online and listen to the message because you will be blessed. But also, if you didn't know, Pastor Robinson pastors two churches. It's the same church, two, just uh, different church plants there, in a, one in Carson City, one in Fallon, Nevada, and he's traveling back and forth on Sundays, just keeping up a busy schedule. He's a favorite preacher, many places across the country, one of my favorite preachers to listen to, definitely, and uh, we certainly love him and, and his wife. I'm so thankful for their ministry. We're going to have a trio of ladies come sing, so ladies, you come on up. And then after that, some of our teenagers here, and then after that, Brother Robinson, you just preach away, and uh, we'll be happy whenever you're done, okay? So thank you so much. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my heart. Cry while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by, Savior, Savior. Hear my heart.
All right, that's on. Okay. I just want to start off by saying um, I'm going to do the best that I can to get done, especially after what the, preach, what the preacher just said before he went down. Did anybody catch what he said? He said, we'll be happy when he's done. <laughs> My wife always tells me, you say stuff, and I know that's not what you meant, but, uh, but I'm not sure right now. <laughs> Be, be happy when we get it done. Praise God. Well, I just I hope you'll be happy when we get it done. I want to say first before we get started, thank you so much for your uh, kindness to my wife and I. You've been so so kind. I really mean you've been kind to us. We came in and uh, we of course were able to go to a hotel and sleep and um, before or rest before I came on Friday. She was able to get some rest. She's been running and doing things also. And then uh, you know we've been in in the hotel every every since we got here. You haven't put us out, so thank you so much for that. And uh, thank you so much for taking care of us by way of, of meeting our needs when it comes to the things that we eat. And um, you gave us some stuff because I can't eat just any anything uh, nowadays that I used to be able to eat whatever I wanted to. Uh, there's a couple things I don't eat. One is coconut. I say, preacher, why you don't eat coconut? Because I don't want to. How about that? And, uh, and then the other one is meatloaf. I don't eat meatloaf, and you didn't try to serve me any of that. Uh, I'll give you a story just so you men can understand that, um, that being, being married is you sometimes looking at your wife and start uh, having, having feelings and compassion for her, to put it that way. And, uh, and, and let me just say this here. You don't have to say everything that's on your mind. Some of you men say everything that's on your mind. I took, we got married, and one of the, one of the things my wife uh, loved to cook was meatloaf. And so she cooked meatloaf. I sit down and eat it because my wife had labored over it and prepared it. And, and, uh, and I was just so thankful that she cared enough to fix me something to eat. Well, after 12 years, I finally, one night she cooked meatloaf and I said, sweetheart, I need to tell you something. She said, what? I don't like meatloaf. Again, I, I can eat meatloaf, so you understand. 12 years, I ate meatloaf. But I thought after 12 years, I could just kind of tell her how I feel as well as just thinking about how she felt. Come on, help me, somebody. And, uh, so, and so I just told her. My mom used to come here. You know how people say, you never had my meatloaf. I had my mama's meatloaf, my grandma's meatloaf, my wife's meatloaf. Every woman in the church tried to give me their meatloaf. I'm just going to say it right up front. I don't like meatloaf. Amen. And I think I should be able to do that now that I'm 61 years old. I can tell somebody I don't like meatloaf, amen. And uh, somebody, usually, usually when I go places, people invite because they know that story. And they'll say, uh, preacher, we're having meatloaf tonight. I said, good. You're coming? I said, yeah, I'll be there. You going to have meatloaf with us? I said, no, I told you I'd be there. I didn't say I'd have meatloaf with you, all right? And I don't want to hurt your feelings, but, uh, but some people do stuff like that. But you've not done anything like that. You've been kind and nice. Uh, if I do get a chance to come back, I can just see somebody bringing a slice of meatloaf. And, and that, that'll be okay. I'll just as kindly as I can say to you, don't you remember I said I don't like meatloaf? Well, yeah, preacher, you haven't had my meatloaf. And I'm not going to, <laughs> amen. And so, uh, so, but after 12 years, I did. My wife, my wife probably look, looking at me right now. I don't know if she, I know she's looking at me. I can see her angle, but I can't see her face. It's one of the reasons I take my glasses off while I'm preaching. So God told the prophet, he said, don't, 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 don't you be concerned about their faces, amen. And so I decided this, if I can't be worried about your faces, I just decide not to be able to see them. And uh, no, I'm only kidding. But um, I don't. I can't see without glasses that far. I can see in the front row, bunch of uh, second row, bunch of young ladies right here. Some some elderly people, and uh, I can see that. But I don't. I can't tell what they're looking like. And so when you don't like the way I preach uh, without my glasses on, I'm just thinking you're enjoying it. So, <laughs> so, but uh, I can read without glasses, but I just can't see that far without glasses. I can read the Bible, but I can't drive. If you ever see me out there driving without glasses, you get out of the way, okay? That's kind of the way it is. But thank you so much, preacher, again, for just your kindness. Thank you, Ms. Faith, for spending time with us and with your families, young families. I know on especially things like Sundays, whenever time you get to be together, you want to be together, but you brought your family and uh, spent time with us. And I just want to say Thank you so very much. Thank you, men, again, for showing up for the Beast Feast. I like that, the Beast Feast. And uh, I'm thinking that the Beast Feast was because we were eating the Beast of the Lamb. Is that, 
I'm not sure. Is that what it, okay, wonderful, wonderful. Next time, one of the great things I have, I never had until I got to Nevada, buffalo. Anybody had buffalo before? Oh, man, that's some good eating. That is some real beast feast going on right there. I've had, I've had uh, buffalo, I've had moose, we've had the elk and the caribou. I've had all of that. But here's the thing about it. I don't kill any of it. I, don't go for, I just want you to know me. I'm just a crazy old city boy who's trying to live in the country, okay? And uh, I joined the military. I had never gone fishing. Never gone fishing. Never done anything when it came to fishing. You say, what does this got to do with the mess? Nothing. I just want you to know me, all right? And so, so, so all of a sudden, this was back in, in 1980, I decided I was going to go fishing. I had an old country boy, Bob Blunt, who took me fishing from Tennessee. I mean, he had to pick up, he, I mean, he had all of the reels and the tackle, he had it the whole bit, so he was teaching me how to fish. And so I go fishing with him on a regular basis. Then one day I decided I wanted to start doing it on my own. I started purchasing all the stuff, the reel, the rods, and I had, I had the hooks and all of the fancy little stuff. I, I was learning, learning, I even did, I even used to jig for fish. How many you jigged for fish before? That's where you just throw a silver uh, object with some hooks on it over, overboard, and there's fishes that just strike on it. And those jigs, I have three hooks, six hooks, some even nine hooks on And you just pull up what you can. Man, we had some good eating back then. Uh, but I was going fishing, and one day I said, I'm going by myself. This was by now 1982. And so in 1982, I'm walking up to my fishing hole. Again, it had nothing to do with the message. I'm just letting you know about me. So I'm walking up to my fishing hole. And when I go to my fishing hole, there's a moose up there. City boy. Moose in the woods. I look at the old moose and I said, shoot. That's my fishing hole. Moose looked at me as if to say, what? do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> I said, shoot. By the time I said shoot a second time, he turned around and there's a moose. He's knocking over trees. I'm running. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm picking him up. I'm younger back then, okay? And, but he's knocking over trees and everything. I dropped my lines. I, I dropped the tackle box. I dropped all of that. That was in 1982. Somebody's got a good reel and rod and tackle box. I've never gone fishing again since. Amen. Forget that fishing stuff. Just put it on the table for me. Amen. Well, I'm telling you something, this whole boy here, I don't know, I don't know why God put me around stuff like that. Because everybody over in, in Fallon, they go hunting and they got to get a deer and, and everything like that. I'll eat whatever you put out there in front of me. After a while, I'll tell you if I don't like it, but I ain't going to, to hunt it. I'm not going to fish for it. Listen, I'm, I'm not even going to try to set a trap to get it. Once I look at it and go, Ugh, I don't want that now, I, I just don't do those sort of things. But one thing I do love is the word of God. I sure love the word of God. I'm so glad that God let me be a preacher. And I want you to do something. Preacher was saying he's going back to teaching in the Psalms. Preacher, I want to help you to understand something here. I didn't know where you were going, so you fix up whatever I mess up. We're going to Psalm 145, the 145th Psalm tonight. And when you find that, would you please stand? Again, thank God for my wife. For those who don't know, we've been married for 42 years. And um, I know she don't look like she's 42, but I know I do. But that's okay. And... Uh, I'm so glad. She was a, she was a, a baby bride. I, I ordered her, and she showed up through the Sears catalog. And, uh, <laughs> and that's what you get sometimes through the stuff in the mail. No, I'm only kidding. But uh, we were young, and I thank God for her saying yes. I thank God. I was, we were so young, I had to get permission from her mother. When I say that, we went to go get the license. She was so young. And I'm just being honest with you, because I didn't know any better. I just wanted to marry the girl. I'm telling you what, I met her one day, picking her brother up from work, and I said, who is that? He said, that's my, uh, uh, I said, uh, who is that uh, at the house? He said, my sister. I said, I want to meet your sister. Well, he didn't know that I had met Connie. He thought I had mess, met his sister, Yo. And so all of a sudden, he said, I'm going to introduce you to my sister. And so this girl shows up, and I said, I don't want to know her. And uh, he said, I said, who you want? I said, you got another sister that was at the house. And he said it like this. I'm telling you, brothers are awful. He said, you want to meet Connie? Connie? You sure it's Connie? Yes, yeah, Connie. Let me see Connie. Amen. And I'm glad I did because now 42 years later, I tell you what, I look at her and say, Connie, amen. 
Just so glad <laughs> to have her for my wife. But preacher, if I mess something up, you fix it up. I hope you will. Psalm 145, if you don't mind. You found it, say amen. I'm just going to read about three verses real quickly. The Bible says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee and will praise thy name forever and ever. Look at verse number three. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. Now maybe you've heard some messages and maybe when your preacher get to it he's going to get to verse number three. I'm not going there really for this message. I'm looking right at verse number one. It's two words in there. Boy I want to just kind of hang on. He says I will get this extol thee. Next two words. Come on, help me out now. Next two words. My God. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Who are you going to do that for? My God. He says, get this, every day will I bless thee. Who are you going to bless every day? My God. I will praise thy name forever and ever. Whose name is he going to praise forever and ever? My God. And he says this about his God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his, his greatness is unsearchable. Who is he talking about? My God. Oh, I love my God. Thank God, if I can say it that way, for my God. My God is great. And he's greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Boy, that's my God. Matter of fact, I looked at this and I started saying, boy, I don't even know half of the things about God. His greatness is unsearchable. I'm you, but he still is my God. I love my God. Father, please bless us now, I pray. Help us with this great truth. And um, uh, just, just a, a simple little, little, little two words, uh, but has a whole lot to say. If, uh, Lord, we listen and we let your Holy Spirit encourage us today. I'm looking forward to what you're going to do in this place as we all consider my God. This bless in Jesus' name. And all God's people say it. Amen. Be seated if you don't mind, please. I want to start off by taking you to the book of Exodus, if you don't mind. The book of Exodus, and most of you, of course, know most of Exodus when it comes to the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And you even know this portion, chapter number 15. Exodus chapter number 15. You know this portion, but I want you to see something here. Of course, the children of Israel have, have been down by the Red Sea. And, uh, and they got the sea in front of them, the mountains on both sides of them, and they got the army of Pharaoh, his folks from Egypt, behind them. And of course, God tells them in chapter number 14 to stop whining and complaining, just be still and watch God work. And of course, they go through the Red Sea on dry ground. Listen to me. I said dry ground. I didn't say the waters just opened up. God wanted to make sure they didn't get bogged down in the, in the muck in the mar in, and in the mud that was going on. God sent them about cross on dry dry ground. Amen. But, but they get to the other side and then the Bible says this. And by the way, let me just share something with you. You ought to be singing on, the, on, on this side, not just waiting to get to the other side. But if all you can do is sing to the, on the other side, look at what the Bible said in Exodus 15 verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song, get this now, unto the Lord. Oh, that's pretty good. They say it's unto the Lord. And spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, boy, for he hath triumphed gracious, uh, gloriously uh, the horses and his riders have he thrown into the sea. And the Lord is my strength. Oh, he's getting closer now. And the song and song, and he has become my salvation. Watch it now. He is my God. Amen. Boy, they, they start singing about all that he is and all that he's done. But they said, I want to let you know one thing is this, is that I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm not talking about what others have said. I'm telling you what I know about my God. Amen. He's glorious. He has strength. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. That's my God. Amen. They can do this for me if you would, please. I got so many I want to go to, but I'm just going to go to this other one. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And you know the verse, verse number 19. Philippians 4 and verse number 19. You know the verse. And I want you to get this. Many people misquote this verse. 
And when I say they misquote it, they, they misquote it, and I'll show you where. Look at what it says here. But my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's not what it says. It says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know what he basically said here? I know about my God. Paul is in prison. Paul talked about learning how to, how to have it, learning how not to have it. He's learning how to be full. He's learning how to be empty. He understands it. And he starts saying, "Woo! that's my God. He's a great God, an awesome God. He's a mighty God. But I want you to know yourself the type of God that I have. My God shall supply all your needs. Here's what I'm trying to say. Somebody else might not know him like you do. Somebody else might not have the excitement about him like you do. But nobody should steal your joy because you have him as your God. He ought to be my God when you speak. My God when I tell folks about how good he is. My God. I'm not talking about my grandma's God, my mama's God, my daddy's God, my brother's God. I'm talking about my God. Amen. Can I ask you a question here? Does your God excite you? Does your God, I mean, just when, you, when you're down, does somehow he get you back up? That's what my God, that's what it should be when I'm talking about your God. And again, I don't know if he's your God. And if he is your God, you ought to be willing to say, preacher, hold on. You don't have all the claim to him. I got some of it myself. I've seen him work in my life. I've seen him do the thing that only God can do. I know he can do all things that are impossible. That's my God. Amen. My God. Can I ask you a question here today? When you think about your God. How does it stir you? What does it, what does it do for you? Now, here's the thing I want you to understand. Because he is your God, God says, look at your text back in Psalm 145 now. God says there's some things you should do. He said, I will extol thee. I will extol thee. I want you to understand what he just said here. Now, is he your God? Let me just ask this question. I'm going to ask it up front. I'm not coming to the end. Is he your God? Are you saved? Say amen. Now, if you're not saved, I understand you can't say amen. But if you are saved, you ought to be saying, he's my God. He saved my soul. Amen. He delivered me from a burning hell. He's given me a home in glory. That's my God. Amen. So the Bible says, and he said, I will extol thee, my God, O king. I'm going to extol my God. Now, here's some words I want you to get. Are you still with me? Say amen. When he says, I will extol thee, he said, God, you don't have to worry about something because in my life, you will be magnified. I will magnify my God. Man, I'll tell you, I'm, when, when, I, uh, when people see me, my God's going to be enlarged. My God is going to be experienced. My God is going to be somebody who people enjoy. That's my God. I'm going to magnify. I will extol. Look it up sometimes. That's all it means. I'm going to magnify. Wait a minute. I'm going to glorify. I'll magnify. I'll glorify. I'm going to amplify. I'm going to testify. Hey, about who? My God. Amen. I want to ask you a question. How many people really know your God because of you? I know it's a Sunday night. I know it's the cream of the crop. But I want to ask because of you. How many people know your, how many people have you magnified him? Listen to me, teenagers. How many people have you, have you taken, glorified him before and, 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 and amplified him and testified of him? Well, that's my God. Somebody say amen. Now, I want you to get something here before I get into the points of the message. I want you to look again at verse number one. I will extol thee, what? My God. I will extol thee, what? my God. Now I want you to understand something here. When you read throughout this psalm, what he's basically saying is here, I'm going to praise the Lord. I mean, I, God's going to be praised in my life. It's not just a shouting praise, but it's a, it's a presenting praise. I, God's going to be praised in my life. So here's what I want you to understand something here. If he's going to be extolled because he's your God, it's got to be something that's personal. Can I ask you the question then? Is God a personal God to you? Is he a real God to you? 
I mean, I'm talking about, not again, not what other people are saying, not what other people are doing, but he's my God, amen. My God shall supply all your need. And they begin to say, he is my God. Is he your God is what you've got to really ask. And you say, preacher, I'm saved. I know he's saved, but you're saved. But you need to understand something here. God is looking for praise from individual personally because he's their God, amen. Not only is he personal praise, personal God, but get a hold of this. Look at verse number one and two again. For I will extol thee, my God, O King. I will bless thy name forever and ever. Notice what he says in verse two. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. If he's your God, here's what he's saying. You should have a persistent praise. You know, sometimes people get tired of hearing you talk. I don't get tired of hearing me talk. I hope you're not getting too tired right now. But I've got a responsibility, and you've got a responsibility to be persistent and letting folks know he's my God. He's my God. This should be, he said, forever and ever. And then again, forever and ever. I'm not letting up. This is something I do. This is something that's natural. This is something that when people come into the church, they ought to be saying, well, who is that they're maybe talking about or shouting about or singing about? We're doing it about my God. Amen. And we're not going to stop. We're not going to let up. We're not going to give in. That's my God. Amen. Something personal, something persistent. Write this down if you don't mind. Are you still with me? Say amen. Notice what he says in Psalm 145, verse 3. Great is the Lord, and listen to this, and greatly to be praised. And this right here, I'm being honest with you. This right here is something that I, I know everybody's not the same. We don't have the same makeup, the same DNA. I understand all of that. But he said he's is, and greatly to be praised. Not lightly to be praised. Not accidentally to be praised. Here's what God said. There ought to be, is it personal? He's my God. Is it something persistent? Yes, forever and ever. He says it is something that you do greatly. Where's the passion? You get, man, I can't wait to find somebody I can talk to, somebody I can tell about what happened to me, somebody who I can give my testimony to. It was in 1967 at the Rock of Ages Missionary Baptist Church in Maywood, Illinois. It was there when I walked down the aisle and I asked the preacher about joining the church. And the preacher said, you don't join no church to go to heaven. And he sat me down and he told me how to be saved. The next week I come back, I walked down the aisle. He said, where you down here for now, little boy? And I said, I'm here to trust Christ as my personal savior and he said okay he wanted to make sure and I'm telling you something here I'm so glad I got that testimony I'm so glad I got the testimony of when I got baptized about two weeks later brother Eli what happened is we went to a church to be baptized because we didn't have a baptistry in our church we built it and they didn't put a, a baptistry in it I don't know why I don't understand but I know I need to be baptized so he took me down to a little old white building church and it was a few blocks away from our church and when I got down there they were singing the old song take me to the wall Water, take me to the water. And it was marching us in, take me to the water. And some deacon will say, for what? And we say, to be baptized. Whew. I know you don't have ceremonies like that. But I'll tell you, I love that old tradition, boy. I'll tell you something. And right before I got ready to get in the water, some lady about three rows back had a heart attack and died. Had a heart attack and died. And God said, that's why you had to get saved, because you don't know when you're going to die. Right when I was going to get baptized. And you know what I can say from that day back then? I'm glad he's my God. That's my God. Amen. The one that saved me. When I die, I'm going to heaven. When I die, ain't no doubt about it. Hey, I've got a passion. He's greatly to be praised. Amen. Something's missing today in the local New Testament church. And I'm not talking about shouting and jumping. I'm just talking about the fact of the passion and the excitement. We're again the singing. And thank you for singing tonight. And the tears. And, and again, the, the mourning about sin because of your God who is greatly to be praised. I want to give you some other things here first. And also, I want you to write this down. It should be a perpetual praise. Look at verse number four. Verse number four, you parents need to get a hold of this. He says in verse number four, one generation shall praise thy works 
to, wait a minute, one generation prays that works to another. Can I tell you, parents, something? Your kids will act like you. I don't really want that. Then <laughs> we better do something about it. My kid, I'm gonna pass it from my generation to the next generation. And we've got to keep passing it on so they won't grow up a generation who knows not the Lord. That's what happened. There finally was a generation that knew not the Lord. Somebody got to make sure the next generation gets. Why don't you write this down? I'm not going to have you turn to it. Psalm 78, verse number 5 and 6. We establish a testimony in Jacob. Psalm 78, verse 5 and 6. We establish a testimony. Psalm 78, verse 5 and 6. We establish a testimony in Jacob and appointed the law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make known unto their children that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born or should uh, arise and declare them to their children. He said, get, hey, how about this generation? Get it to that generation so the generation that don't have kids yet can get it to their generation. So guess what? We got this thing going on and on and on and on and on. Somebody say amen. Hey, guess what? Because if we don't, God says in the book of Exodus that the curse can get to the third and fourth generation. Yeah. Hey, how about this tonight? How about saying that's my God? My God, look at verse number five, if you don't mind. I will speak of the glorious honor of, the, of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. My God is a, is a God that should be glorified. Verse number six, and men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. I will declare thy greatness. He's a great God. I said he's a God to be glorified, and he is a great God. What makes him so great? Creation. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. What makes him so great? His control of everything. What makes him so great? Because by him, all things consist. Somebody say amen. Because without him, there's not anything that was made that was made. And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. That's John 1 verse 3 and Colossians 1 verse 17. Thank God for the greatness of God. That's my God. Hey, guess what? Yes, he created me. And thank God he can control me. And thank God by him, all things, even me, consist. Amen. I said, do you know that God? My God, my God is a God to be glorified. My God is a God who is great. My God, verse number seven, Psalm 145, verse seven, they shall, shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness. My God is a good God, amen. And shall sing, we'll sing of his righteousness. Hey, watch this, every good and perfect gift, every good and perfect gift, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights. That's James one, verse 17, my God, is a good God. Amen. And he's a gracious God. Look if you will please. Boy, I wish I had time to preach all of this. Verse 8 and 9. The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies over all his works. That's my God. And you know what the psalmist said? I'm going to praise him. My God gets to pray. And by the way, if you don't think praising is in the Bible, why don't you look at Psalm 146 now, verse number one. Are you still with me? Say amen. Psalm 146, verse number one. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise God. He says, verse 10, the Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, and unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Look at verse 1, chapter 147, Psalm 147. Not just, Psalm 147. He says, praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and the praise is comely. Somebody say amen. Verse number 20, there's many more things in there. He hath dealt so, uh, so with, with any nation, and, and as for for his judgment, they are not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Look at 148. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the height. Praise ye him and all his angels. Praise him all ye, all his hosts. Praise the Lord, he says again at the end of verse 14. Psalm 149. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. And he ends again in verse 9. Praise
praise ye the Lord. Look at Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in his mighty act. Praise him according to his excellent goodness, uh, uh, excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the trembles and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organ. Praise him upon the, uh, upon the loud cymbal. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord. And that should be easy. Why? Because he's my God. Amen. My God. I'm just trying to tell you that when it comes to God, there shouldn't be a lack of excitement. Shouldn't be just a little excitement. There ought to be a whole lot of excitement about my God. Let me just give you the message and I'll be done. And maybe you can see why this old preacher ain't ever got over what came over him one day. My God can. Write that down. My God can. My God can. That's my God. And I want to tell you something here I found out about my God. My God can. You've heard it, so I'm not going to give you anything new. My God can solve any problem. My God can save any person. My God could take and, and, and satisfy my lost soul, and my, my, my hungry soul. My God, my God, my God. I want to tell you something here. When it comes to my God, I've asked him to do some things that I didn't think he could do. I've asked him to do some things I didn't know that he really wanted to do. But I'm telling you something. He proved to me that he can and he will if I just let him be my God. 1979. We're in an old hospital. Boy was being born. Doctors came out and said, he ain't going to make it. That was my son. He's not going to make it. He was premature. Two pounds, 12 ounces. Went to a little chapel they had at the hospital. I said, dear God, everybody's telling me he's not going to make it. My daddy said he's not going to make it. The doctor said he's not going to make it. My wife hasn't been able to see him. I saw them roll him out in front of me, trying to get him to a helicopter to take him to a children's hospital. Now, God, they all said he ain't going to make it. I want to know, will you save my son's life today? And if you will, dear God, I'll never try to take credit for it. I'll never tell people that you did it because of who I am. You did it because of who you are. You want the people to see that I have a God who is alive. He's not dead. Would you help me, dear God? Can I tell you something about my God who can? That boy, 42 years old now, married with four boys himself. I said he's 42 years old now, married with four boys himself. See, what I'm trying to say is this. God said, you ought to praise him because of what he can do. My God can. My God can. And boy, I've got so many things to tell you about my God who can. The man heard about me talk about my mother who had the kidney problem. Well, she finally got a kidney. She got a kidney, and two weeks later, that kidney fell. And then guess what happened? Two weeks later, she got another kidney. And everybody said, how did she get another kidney? You're on the list. You have to go back to the back of the line. For some reason, somehow, all across America, there was nobody who was a match for that kidney but my mama. Let me tell you something here. My God can take a, take a kidney patient who's on the bottom of the list and bring them to the top of the list. Amen. And I'm telling you something here. They kept talking about this kidney may last 10 years. It might even get 15 years. My mama kidney made it 37 years. Amen. Somebody why? Because my God can. Amen. Yes, my God can. My God can. And my mama saw us become preachers. Her boy. She saw her grandchildren all be born. Hey, my, my God. Amen. And you can't praise him with that. Man, I know God's done some things for some of you in a mighty way. And he said, I will extol thee. I'll magnify you. I'll amplify you. I'll take and, and, and glorify you. I'll testify about you. That's my God. Oh, my God can. My God, get this here now. 
my God calls. <laughs> my God calls. I'm not talking about calling me to preach. I'm not talking about giving me a message where I can go and deliver it. My God calls. What does he call? He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He said, call, come unto me, and I'll, all ye that labor, and I'll give you rest. He said, call unto me. And Jeremiah, that's Matthew 30, 11, 28. And Jeremiah 33, 3, he says, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Preacher, that sounds like the last point. Hold a minute a second. I want you to see this about my God. See, people can call you and say, if you ever need anything, just give me a, and then you call them. And then all of a sudden, you get the voicemail. You say, boy, that didn't go well. I thought you were going to be available. Oh, wait a minute. You didn't hear what I just said. I thought you would be available. My God calls me to come. And you know what? He's available every time. <laughs> available every time. He's not just available. Please get a hold of this. He's accessible. Sometimes you call people and maybe they are there on the line. But you know what they said? I, I can't, can't help you right now. My God's accessible. Oh, yeah. My God, is, my God is available. My God is accessible. Please get a hold of it. And my God is able. Sometimes you get people on the line. Watch this, brother and sister. You get people on the line and you say, you told me to call you. I'm calling you. And uh, again, I'm so glad I got a hold of you. And then you tell them your problem and they say these words. I can't help you. I'm just trying to tell you about my, is it okay if I talk about my God? My God calls me to, to come to him because he's available, he's accessible, and he is able. Amen. Boy, when I was growing up, they used to sing a song that said, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. They say the line is never busy. Tell him what you want. And then they say the telephone number is Jesus. Tell him what you want. Amen. Boy, I'm so glad I grew up with something like that because you want to know something? I call him in the midnight hour. I call him when there's nobody else up to be able to be called. I call him when, again, there's a situation nobody can help me with. I call him and he said, come unto me, all ye that labor. Call unto me. I will answer thee. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. He has said, call on me. That's my God. Amen. My God can. My God calls, says call. And my God cares. My God cares. He tells us through the writer Peter, cast your cares upon me. Psalmist, go and cast them upon me. My God cares. Let me tell you how much God cares, and I'm done. Cares enough? Come to this world. Save lost sinners. Yeah. My God really does care. My God cares so much, and I told it to you this morning, allow himself to suffer all the things he did, all the stuff he had to go through. Why? Because my God cares. My God cares about, listen to me now, and I'm almost done. My God cares about the sinner who needs saving. Yeah, my God cares about the sinner who needs saving. How you know, preacher? He cared about me. I get trying to preach the word of God. And uh, <laughs> I listen to stuff, brother. My God cares about the sinner who needs to be saved. My God, listen to this now, cares about the saint that has gone astray. He cares about the saint who's gone astray. I'm talking about the one who's come to him and said, uh, I want to be saved. My God cares about him. My God cares. Can I help you? Can I use your hand to help? 
My God cares. Come on around here. My God cares. That old sheep in Luke chapter number 15, he started wandering off. And he got out there. The Bible don't talk about, you can stop now. All the situation he'd gotten himself into. That little sheep. Maybe he was wandering off looking for water. Maybe he was, he, he was, he was busy eating. The, but, but he got away from God. And my Bible said he cares enough to leave the 90 and 9. To come after that one. And when he finds him, don't worry about it. I'm not going to pick him up. I'm definitely not going to pick him up. And he throws him across his shoulder. He cares enough to say, you know what? I'm not going to make it hard for you to get back. Oh, thank you. I'm not going to make it hard for you to get back. You wandered out there. You went astray. You took off away from the folk. Now, yeah, he does break his leg. But understand something here. He could have broken his leg and said, you better keep up. He didn't do that, brother. He threw him over his shoulder and he took him back to the fold. Hey, aren't you, why don't you do something here today? My God has said, if you've strayed, if you've gotten away, hey, I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. And why don't you do like the prodigal son? Come to yourself. Come down this whole aisle and say, here I am, God. I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. And then you get ready to start making all your excuses. He said, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's do something. Let's get us a rope and put on. Let's get a ring and put on. Let's get some shoes and put on. And let's go kill that fatted calf. Do you know ever talk about why he was a fatty calf? Because they kept plumping him up. What were they plumping him up for? Waiting for an old soul. Come home. Come home. Ye that are weary come home. Oh, yes. He'd been anticipating your return. Go ahead and have a seat. My God. My God. My God is not looking at people who've gone astray and say, stay out there. No, he said, come home. Come home. And I'm so glad he cares. He's concerned about the one that is left that's out there trying to make it on their own. Sometimes people don't come back to church because they say, you don't know what I've done. I got news for you. God knows everything you've done. He knows everywhere you've done it. And he knows how long you've been doing it. But my God, I'm talking about my God. I don't know if you have this God that I have. My God. And get this here. My God will let you confess whatever you've done. And he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sin. Cleanse us from our unrighteousness. How's that? Because he's a God who cares. All I want to do is say to you today, when you don't feel like going another day, think about my God. And I hope you said he's my God preacher. You don't feel like you can just go on a little longer. Just say, oh, I can do it for my God. He's to be magnified, amplified, glorified, and testified of. That's my God. And thank God for the singing in the church. I wish I, I, wish I had time to labor it to you. This would be something that you do within yourself, something you do in the sanctuary, and something you do in society. You ought to go read it. Psalm 111, verse number one. He says, I'm going to do this in the sanctuary and in the congregation. Wait a minute. In the sanctuary and the congregation the same? He says, guess what? Wherever folks are gathered at, they should know about your God. All the time. How about it today? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I got to be done. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. My God. Thank God. <laughs> it's quite a way to say it for my God. My God, who is an awesome God. Father, thank you so much. As the preacher come, would you help us today to appreciate more our God? And again, I hope it becomes personal. Oh, that's my God. I even wish people would start 
comparing notes about the God they serve. Let me tell you what my God did for me. Oh, no, I can top that one. Let me tell you what my God did. I, we're not bragging on ourselves. We're bragging on you. Would you help us today, I pray, as the bowed and eyes are closed. Preacher, it's yours. It's your bowed eyes are closed. If you need to use the altar, it's open. Let's use it tonight. That's my God. Thank you so much, Pastor. I invite you to come spend some time talking to your God. You don't need a, to learn a new language. You need to just use the one you have and praise God. Where you're at, why don't you just praise God for what he's done for you this week? Just recognize what he does for us. Just remember what he's done for us in the past. Encourage and just right now spend some time with your God. pray in just a second and dismiss us with our heads bowed and eyes closed, but I know when we're at church, we don't spend a lot of time here at the altar, and I'm not saying you have to, but I hope that when we go home, we're going to spend some time praising God. I hope when you get up in the morning, you're going to spend some time praising God. I hope throughout your day tomorrow, you're going to tell somebody about how good your God is. Let's not just hear this, let's do this. It's a command so many times throughout Scripture. I believe it's a command more than any other in the Bible is to praise the Lord. Father, we have been blessed. We praise you tonight. We thank you. You're so good to us. We can, it, your, your grace, your goodness is unsearchable. The God who hung the stars, you just, you just did that because you love us. You just put these things out there in your amazing power and creation. How can we not look up as we leave tonight and just praise you and thank you for what you've done? Lord, I pray that this week, instead of getting all the troubles and trials on our mind, we'd get the praise of God on our minds. I pray that you'd help us this week with whatever difficulties we're facing, that the praise of God would be upon our lips. Help us to remember this week all the good things, all the wonderful things that you've done for us, and say, God's been good in my life. I pray you bless the Robinsons as they travel back, I believe, tomorrow. Keep them safe. Continue, please, to use them. And thank you so much for just a great day in church today and, and a great beast feast for the men. I pray that you'd help this to be something that, uh, Lord, just stirs us up going forward into this next month where there's a lot of outreach and things going on. Lord, may we just take the praise of our God into our society. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pastor and Mrs. Robinson, thank you so much, both of you. you this is... This for them, I mean, to drive, they drove all the way down here. It really is a sacrifice. They've got to be tired, and I know they've got to drive back. And is it tomorrow? You're heading back tomorrow? Okay, heading up to Northern California to preach at Golden State. And, uh, but to pray for them, if you would, please. Make sure you get by and just thank them for being here. And uh, it's been a wonderful day, and we're just praising the Lord for that. We're going to continue to do that. We love you folks. I hope you'll be here. Now, I did not mean how I said that, brother. But I sat down, and my wife said, you did say that. And I was like, no, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, 
I don't have every word typed out up here, okay? And I took my size 13 shoe and put it right in my own mouth. I'm sorry about that, brother. I did not mean that. Okay, you know what I mean. All right. Get by and shake preacher's hand. We love you folks. God bless you. You're dismissed.